What to do? Quickly then. No one back home will ever believe this. Can't slow down. No traps, please. should speak up. The gate is closed. As is Casador. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me back. I think we should track down my fellow spawn. I'm not exactly looking forward to a reunion, but perhaps they'll know something. If we can find them, we can force them to tell us what he's been doing since I was gone. And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Unless Cazador's changed their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town. Seeking prey. We should get to them first. And then we can make their pretty tongues talk. goes nothing. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the Brain, and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of Mind Flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the Dream Visitor's protection. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the Dead Three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. 
but sleep is not for you. I need your help. I can't do this without you. Thank <laughs> you. 
But we will all become thralls. Stomach drops, your chest constricts, your thoughts begin to splinter. Don't waste a step. What's up for discussion? The gate is closed. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me... <sighs> to tell you the truth, I think we should track down my fellow sport. If we can find them, we can force them to... And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town. We should get to them first. And then we can make... All this with her together will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? 
You will not have long to wait, for sleep is... I need your help. to hold together much longer. Breathing, despite everything. Ah! Hurry! I can't hold them back alone. Make way. 
friend of Gage, you will be closed. the skull. It's not over. Come to the skull.
Geek abomination! By the one true sky, what is this madness? The Geek Yankee is the source of our protection against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. child from a viper back in the druid's grove. You saved the Asima night song from her soul cage. Your continued existence as yourself and not a mind flayer should be all the proof you need. Now, help me. To be subtle, the Mind Flayer's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a walk pup learning to walk. You must be joking. I am telling you my thoughts directly into your head. But if you insist on taking a look for yourself, be my guest. existence to date could have prepared you for this. As the horror subsides, you are left with only one coherent thought. You must do whatever you can to subdue the Githyanki. Happy? Now, join me. Fight! Aid an illicit against Githyanki. We cannot. We must not. Your blind loyalty will be your undoing, Lazel. Fight with me for your own survival. Together, we can turn the tide.
my time. Coming through. Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. was necessary. Rare are those that would openly consider a partnership with a Mind Flayer. Even those who are on a path of becoming one. It's like I said before, I'm just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain. The one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free, and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain, where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call me Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. Orpheus? Impossible! He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. 
His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. I do not have the privilege of knowing the answer, but the consequences are clear enough. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead, but as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. Blacketh is eternal. My people would not be swayed by this... this false prince. A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Blackith. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, 
I searched for a new vessel, but the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Even as you say the words, you feel a lurch of disappointment. Your mind bristles with illithid potential. How could you be so cruel as to deny yourself what you want most in the world? I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it. So embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. Tadpole, nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you, just as the Emperor said. pain tears through your head as thoughts and instincts do battle within it. Then, silence. Your mind opens and all resistance evaporates. A coldness seeps through your veins as 
once the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the brain, and bring it under our control.
hesitation. My faith will guide me. Where am I needed? Let's get going. What path lies before me? What's in here? of the mother, the traitor prince, the Laxerai. He sought Vlakit's head in a gay ploy for her throne. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, 
and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlakith I. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the traitor's with us, controlled by that repugnant Illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlakith's dominion to his Geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. Orpheus is not Githyanki. He is a gaith puppet cloaked in Githyanki's skin, and the most powerful mind master known to my people. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more, and one by one, the plains would fall to the gaith. What about him? As loathsome as it is, the Emperor slipped one fact into its slurry of lies. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind, one talent of many that drove the Illithids to enthrall him. The Prince is a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Vlakith was no fool. Why destroy a weapon like that, when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself?
No time to rest. <laughs> 